Welcome back. We're going to focus now on building the actual application that we've been talking about. So this tutorial, 4.1, entitled Building the App, we're going to focus on setting up our environment, setting up our application directories and files the Couch App way. Now that we have uh, a lot of our dependencies created, how are we going to write our code? Are we going to just use a text editor or are we going to use a, a full-blown IDE? Uh, where are we going to put our files? How are we going to organize project files, especially if we're going to be able to publish them to uh, CouchDB? That's what we want to focus on in this uh, particular tutorial. So we're just going to take some time to get a workflow in place. So let's do that. The first thing I would highly recommend that you do is complete this MVC architecture guide. Now the next thing you're going to want to decide is Am I just going to write my code using a text editor, or am I going to write my code using an IDE, or am I going to do both? What I did in this example is I just use a text editor, and one of my favorites is called Context, and you can download Context here at this URI. And I like it because it has a whole bunch of highlighters for various programming languages. And since MVC Couch is a simple application, not a lot of lines of code, I went ahead and just did all the work using Context as a text editor. Now, some developers are used to using full-blown IDEs, or uh, integrated desktop environments, for writing their JavaScript code. And certainly, that's the way to go if you have thousands of lines of code to write or a very large project. Uh, I've done my own research, and I found something that I think I would like to use, and I thought I'd share with you one IDE that you might like. And the name of that IDE is Speakit. So why do I like Speakit? Uh, mainly because of its up-to-date support of ext.js4. And uh, it comes in a standalone form. Here's, this is their download page. If you, if you just want Speakit as a standalone app, you can download it here. It's a small file. But since it's Eclipse-based, you can also download it as an Eclipse plugin and merge it into your Eclipse environment. And so that's what I've chosen to do. And I'll show you why I've chosen to do that in a minute. You can follow the instructions here on how to install Eclipse and install the plugin. And the install page for Eclipse Classic is here. And again, there's plenty of uh, instruction on how to install Eclipse. So why use Eclipse as a development platform or an IDE when it's really designed for Java development and we're writing JavaScript applications? I mean, isn't that kind of overkill? Let's go ahead and open up Eclipse and discuss some reasons why I went ahead and just took the leap and I used it as my IDE. One reason I went ahead and did it this way is because SpeakIt is provided as a plugin for Eclipse already. So when I want to do JavaScript development, I just use the SpeakIt perspective and I can have all the convenience that it provides in writing JavaScript code. But what if I want to develop some server-side Java code? I can just switch over to the default Java perspective and write my uh, Java code in the same IDE. What if you want to write Android apps? Eclipse comes with uh, plugins and perspectives for writing Android apps as well. In addition to the perspectives, there's a gazillion plugins for Eclipse. We already talked about this Android SDK. But uh, what if you want to write a phone application? Maybe just a web application designed to run on a phone using, say, Sentia Touch but you want that phone web app to be accessed as a native phone app. Well, that's what PhoneGap is all about, and there's a plug-in for PhoneGap in Eclipse. There's even a plug-in for couch apps that run in Eclipse. So those are some reasons why you might consider Eclipse as an IDE, but for JavaScript development, I really like SpeakIt, primarily because of its support for ext.js4. As we showed you earlier, the SpeakIt plugin has its own perspective, and you can set up JavaScript profiles in this perspective. You just go to Window, Preferences, and after the plugin's installed, you'll see a SpeakIt group here. If you click JavaScript Profiles, it'll take you to this page, and you can install all kinds of JavaScript libraries, uh, jQuery, Yahoo, Silverlight, so here's uh, ext.js 4's profile. If you have access to this JSB2 file, 
your SpeakIt environment will provide code completion and documentation and other convenience features. So where do you get this JSB2 file? Fortunately, um, SpeakEd is actively in development, and the author of it has provided some uh, support for ext.js4 on his forums. So if you go to this URI here uh, and look at this thread, he has posted um, an updated plugin file and also the JSB2 file here. So this is where you can get that JSB2 file, which is a pretty good resource for using SpeakIt as a plugin in Eclipse. So getting back to Eclipse, um, that's some discussion there on uh, setting up a JavaScript profile that uses ext.js4. And now I'd just like to um, demonstrate uh, the benefits of having that JavaScript profile installed. First of all, um, if you go to your Profile Explorer tab, you have a we have a Project Explorer, but also a Profile Explorer. Um, you can choose ext.js4 right from here and get a global view of their classes. And one nice thing about this uh, profile is if you look at some of the classes, you can read documentation in this window here that are contained in the source files of uh, ext.js4. And another convenience is code completion. I'll give you an example of that. You'll notice when I type in uh, one of the newer classes in ext.js4 is the model manager. And you'll see that if I uh, type in model, I get model manager as an option in this pop-up window here. And uh, as I traverse this code chain, I can continue to get the functions and properties assigned to that. Let's just do a get name function. And so you have the, the nice code completion feature there. So I just wanted to show you some of these things that I learned in setting up my environment. It's just a suggestion. Take it for what it's worth. Maybe this is something that uh, you might find beneficial. Now let's get back to setting up MVC Couch. So we need to set up our project files in such a way that we follow ext.js4's MVC pattern, but also in such a way that it can be easily published to CouchDB using CouchApp. So how are we going to do that? I just created a folder off my hard drive entitled CouchApps, and I put all my CouchApps in this folder. And as you can see here, I have one made for MVC Couch, the name of my application. So if you drill in, you'll see I made several subfolders in this app folder. And this pattern follows a folder structure that Couch app is expecting. Uh, you may recall when we were looking at design documents in CouchDB, there were a lot of properties in the JSON of the design document, and those properties correlate to these folder names. And there's a couple of files here as well that you'll need to be aware of when you're using Couch App. There's uh, Couch App RC and Couch App Ignore. Let's just briefly take a look at those in a text editor. Couch App RC is a required file. It can be an empty object. It really doesn't have to have anything in it. It just has to exist. But one nice thing you can do if you are going to put some data in this object is set up your environment to point to different Couch DBs. So you don't always have to type these URLs in the command line. But you define the DB's URL here. And so this is the URI to my local host, local couch DB. And this is the URI to my Iris Couch Cloud DB. And then Couch App Ignore, if there are folders in your project structure that you do not want to push to couch DB, you can list them as an array here. So that's what these two uh, Couch App configuration files are for. But uh, as we showed earlier, most of the application that we're pushing to CouchDB are in the form of attachments. So let's look inside this attachments folder, and here we should see something very familiar. This is where we can set up the MVC pattern that we learned about in the MVC Getting Started Guide that Sencha provided for us. We have our app.js file, our index.html file, just like in the example. If you look into the app folder, we have the controller, the model, the store, and the view folders, just like in the example. Many of the files are the same. Like if you look at my controller, it's named users, just like the other example. 
uh, models are a little different. We have a doc.js and member.js. We have two models in our MVC Couch application. Uh, stores are also a little bit different. We have a user store, but in addition we have a details store defined. And then finally our views are a little bit different. We have to add this viewport.js file, which isn't in the example. I'll show you why. And then uh, our user views consist of a detail grid and a list grid and a, a doc edit form and a user edit form. And of course, uh, these correspond with graphical components in the, in the GUI. So these are the folders for our app. But we're also going to need to supply some of the ext.js4 source files. You'll notice that we don't have the entire SDK included in this folder. We're only putting uh, source JavaScript files and other resources that we need for MVC Couch. Now, uh, if you recall, we downloaded a special version of ext.js4's SDK provided by Peter Mueller, and uh, his version included his patch, which we're going to need for our application. So this window shows all the folders that are unzipped or unarchived and as you can see I'm only selecting the files that we need not the entire SDK so I just drag and drop these into this folder that's what I recommend you do that way you're not pushing a bunch of files you don't need to CouchDB. And I took it a step further by even uh, after copying some of those files deleting some resources as far as themes go I'm only using the default theme so I deleted all the other themes and I'm only putting in images for the default theme. And I even have more images than I need because I'm not using all these graphical components, but for simplicity, I just left it as is. And the same is true with CSS. I'm only using the default ext all CSS, so I deleted all the others, and I'm only including this in my project folder. So that's all you really need to know about the uh, folder structure, how to set it up, and how to name some of the files. You can download all these project files from my website. And if you do it this way, then uh, you'll be automatically set up to uh, not only follow the MVC pattern that uh, ext.js recommends you follow, but also to publish your application as a Couch app to CouchDB. So the last thing I want to show in this tutorial is some code. So let's go ahead and load up all our JavaScript application files in our text editor and as I mentioned earlier I'm just going to use context as my uh, editor for this this project since it's a small project and uh, I went ahead and loaded them all in index.html is the, uh, the, root the root file app.js is the application uh, code uh, users.js here is our controller file doc.js and member.js are two um, models that we're going to define. users.js again, this time in the store folder. Uh, users is a store and details is another data store that we're going to define. Then we get into our views. This is the list view, the list grid. This is our detail grid view. And then our two forms, doc edit and user edit, are defined in these files. So these are all the files that um, MVC Couch uses. These are the source code files. And that about wraps it up for this tutorial. Next, we're going to start looking at each of these individual files, explaining them, and uh, understanding them. So thank you for your time. And I look forward to seeing you on our next tutorial.